All right, so we're going to be doing hack the box uh, remote. Let me actually update the stream also here. There we go. So we got hack the box remote here, right? And we'll go ahead and we'll run this guy right here. So let's go ahead and start off with the rust scan, right? CD into hack the box. And we will root hack RF remote. Actually, I don't actually want to do that. Because if this is the way I think it is. It might be. No, it's not. Okay. Alright. So yeah, we can actually remove tech RF. That guy like right there. Alright. Let's see if I remember this guy. Let's go and rust scan him. Start off with a rust scan and we'll see what we can do from here. So we got port 21 open, FTP 80, 111, 139, 45, 20, 49. So we have NFS open. So we can only do a show mount for that guy right there. Uh, we have a slash site backups. So we can do a uh, mount. What is it? Or is it show mount? No, it should be mount, right? Mount tag T. Yeah, I'll do it. Do I have mountain here? I think I do under Linux, don't I? No, put that fine command. Of course, I don't have mountain here. Why would I? That would make my life way easier. And, uh, you know, FTP, SMB, web, mount. I do have mount. Okay, cool. Sudo mount, tag T, that's why. Um, I have no idea. I think it's an easy. I don't know. 4.3 machine rating. Probably an easy box. Yeah, easy. So we'll do a sudo mount. Tac T. Okay. Their IP address. What we're allowed to mount, which is site backups. And we'll throw that into what's called temp on on uh, remote. Oh, let's go ahead and make directory template real quick. And we'll do that again. All right. Awesome. Uh, so we do have NFS and we do have a mount in there, right? Let's go ahead and check out that 445 also. Make sure we're not going down a rabbit hole like right now. Let's go ahead and CD into temp. And we have quite a few things. We have Umbraco. Okay. So we have Umbraco here. So we know that they're running Umbraco, right? So now we just need to kind of figure out First off, what version it is. And from there, see if there's any uh, anything that we can do with it. I think a web config would probably have the version number for it, right? Well, that's a lot of stuff. Maybe application in there. Let's go ahead and uh, cat web config. That's good. Take a minute. Let's go ahead and grep for Umbraco. We'll see what we can get in here. 445 doesn't really look like we'll be able to get much with it. SB client. Back L. Try still, but <clears throat> nothing. Okay. Doesn't really look like we're getting much in here either, though, does it? For that Umbraco guy, like right there. So, what we want to do is figure out what is a version or where does Umbraco. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and go to the site, like, real quick. And let's see if we might be able to find, like, a login page or something like that. I didn't really look at that Rust scan very well. What do we got? We got port 80 up and running. Okay. 5985 also. Okay, so we have here, right? Let's go ahead and maybe run like a brute free up. Great, Umbraco, yep. Okay, so we do have Umbraco here, okay. It's like a login for this. Or Umbraco, obviously there's not a login. We actually already saw all that, huh? Slash Umbraco. That should be something because we already were in the NFS share. And okay, we have a login here. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and see if we can't figure out
and Bracco hashes kept. Bracco stores hashes, okay. See where it's actually. Aaron, how you doing? Let's see where Umbraco actually stores his stuff. Like, where's Umbraco's hash table stored? Okay, we, oh, nope, we already looked at that one. Hmm. So I don't remember where it actually stores password. I do remember being able to figure, find this on my laptop, but don't know where the heck. Alright, I did want to ask how do you keep going and start fresh work. Um I don't know, it's fun. I don't know. <laughs> um I have fun doing it. The kids go to bed, I have some time on my hands, I get really bored really easily. Um I was feeling I was feeling it the other day, I just didn't want to do it probably like three days ago. I just did not want to do it. Like, I was actually streaming. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And I just, like, got off. I was like, yeah, I'm done for done for today, you know. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I like doing it. All right, so we have this Umbraco SDF, right? File and app data, right? So we sh might be able to look at that app data. Now we just got to figure out what the hell app data is even at. So let's go ahead and... CD into a Bronco again, right? Oh, nope, there's app data. Okay, never mind. CD into app data. And yeah, got to take care of my family once I get out, so. And I want a boat so I can water ski. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and grep this guy like right here. Let's go ahead and cat on Bronco.sdf. It says something about an SDF file over here, I think, right? From what we were reading. Yeah, I'm Brocco SDF in the app data folder. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and grep that guy for... Uh, actually, let's just go ahead and cat it like real quick and see what we got. See if we have any hashes, what we have in here. All right, we got a lot of crap in here. A lot of crap that we can't read. Let's go ahead and scroll up to the top. Hopefully it's up there. Let's go ahead and grep for password. See if that says anything. Nope, okay. Grep for pass. Nope, okay. Let's just scroll all the way up to the top and see if we get anything. Mm, can't not really get much in there. Uh, I guess strings. Let's try strings with it. Let's try that. Scrolling up. I'm scrolling on up. Let's try grep for admin. Or administrator or anything like that. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Okay, so let's see what we got here. Admin at hdb.local. Looks like a hash and it's a hash algorithm of SHA1. Let's freaking go. Yeah, yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't overthink anything. Something that my wife gets mad at me about all the time. I had to fix the lawnmower today because I didn't overthink running over the damn sticks. <laughs> Good thing I know how to work on stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and copy that. We're well, going to do a quick nano or just echo, I guess. Let's echo that guy. Um, not there, though. Let's go ahead and... And we'll go ahead and echo this guy right here into hash.txt. Let's go ahead and... Um, John, hash.txt, yep. Word list to go equal rocky.txt, fork equals four, format raw SHA1. We know it's a SHA1. Oh, let's go ahead and locate john.pot because we have to get rid of him first. I don't remember the damn password. Let's go bacon and cheese. All right. <clears throat> yeah, had to fix the damn lawnmower today. 
Oh my. And then, no joke. Okay, so I had to fix the lawnmower today, right? But side quest here. Um, so the blades on our lawnmower over here are bolted in, right? They're not like one long blade, right? How most lawnmowers are, you know, they got the hole in the middle and it does like that. No, these ones actually, like the end of them were actually bolted in. So I told her that one of the ends, um, so something happened a while ago before I even got it where I think the blades are like a little bit off or whatever, no biggie, whatever. But, uh, sometimes if you hit something hard enough, the blades will actually hit the lawnmower. <laughs> the front of the lawnmower so i have to like beat it back into place the front of the lawnmower so it like doesn't do that well i did that today and the blade all of a sudden like came like bent toward me right which no big i mean it didn't like bent toward me that sounds bad but it like bent right so i lifted it up today i'm looking at it, looking at it and i'm thinking this thing's screwed you know um so i started working on it, started working on it I ended up getting the blade back in place but now the bolt went tightened down and then you know just one thing after another after another Finally get it working properly, go to start it up, and it won't start. And so I'm like, man, I'm like, maybe the freaking, you know, the rod is bent, you know, something. And from hitting the thing, you know, the engine, you know. So I'm like, crap. So I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about thinking about it. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait, it's been sitting outside the whole time. It's carbureted. Like, it's probably just freaking flooded. Let me give it, you know, three minutes to see what happens. So I walk out to like five minutes later. Go to start it up. Obviously, smoke starts coming out like crazy, you know. And sure enough, yep, it was definitely the rod. Or it was definitely the, um, just the carburetors. But yeah, that was, a uh, that was like an hour and a half, two hour adventure today. So we do have admin bacon and cheese at admin.htb.local. Admin at htb.local. So let's go ahead and try to do an admin at htb.local with the password of bacon and cheese. Okay, now we still don't know. What version this is, right? I could have swore I found the version before. Let's go ahead and see the back back. I feel like if we're gonna see a version, it's gonna be a web, web config. We're just gonna cat that. Okay, there we go. That's how I cat it just fine. Oh, I see actually version, old version, old version, old version, new version, new version. Okay, let's go ahead and just try to grab the version. She's like a grep tag guy, huh? And see if we see anything in here for I should just grep for. I keep calling him Brocco. I think it's like on Barco or something like that. Okay, configuration status value 7.2, 7 7.12.14. So we have a version now, right? <laughs> so we have a version now. But you know what's funny though, even after all that, right? I told my wife what happened every day of that, and she's making fun of me or whatever else. And uh all of a sudden I walked back in and she was sitting there and she's like, you know, that actually may not have been your fault. And I was like, Oh, I know it's not my fault. I hundred percent know it's not. I did not that that bolt did not just come loose. I guess like before I got back and she just forgot to tell me about it, she noticed she had she was cleaning out the bottom or whatever, and she noticed that one of the blades was moving. And it wasn't tightened down all the way to the bolt. And I was sitting there like, yo, you got to be kidding with me, right? Like, you, like, so you knew that this was happening. You forgot to tell me about it. And all of a sudden, I'm out there fixing it thinking, oh, it's the sticks I ran over. No, it's not. It just loosened up over time. Let's go into a search point for that, like right there. And we have authenticated remote code execution. Let's go. All right, let's go ahead and grab that. And we will. Yeah, I was like, you know, that may have not actually been your fault. Which I was like, okay, what happened? All right, so we have our login, which we know is admin at acb.local, right? He needs that like right there, okay? Don't know why that wasn't there. We have our password, which is bacon and cheese. We have a host, which is the IP address. We are crushing this thing. We have all the information. We have a host. And this guy right here, if you can't tell, he's going to open up calculator.exe, which is going to be absolutely useless for us. So let's go ahead and see if we can't change this over. We got here. Okay. So public stream. Whoa. Forgot to turn up my volume. Check 02X. Hey, thanks a lot for the follow. Thank you very much. All right, so this is going to be absolutely useless to us, like right here, right? So I'm thinking what we want 
is to change this out, which this is actually string command equals that. Oh, command equals PowerShell. Dot exe, right? We want to open a PowerShell, and we want to make a callback to us. So we want to do an IEX, IWR, use basic parsing, HTTP, RIP address. So we want to call back to ourselves, right? 1010.14.19 slash invoke PowerShell TCP.ps1. I'm thinking something like that, because that will automatically run it. Also, so that means we need to get that guy up and running, right? So let's go into tools. What's up, sweetheart? No, you're good. What's up? Well, uh, like four hours. So what's up? Yeah. Since I have two hours left, I have to No, because Samuel's going to make it with us. Oh. So it's going to be tomorrow that we build the volcano. Okay. Okay, high five. I love you. All right, have fun. All right. So... Let's go ahead and go into here. We'll do a Python 3. You want to help me hack this? Okay, come on over. Attack M, HP server.80. All right, so, yeah, grab a chair and come on over. Help me hack this thing. All right. So this is what we got, okay? Okay. We have a little overview of what's happened here, right? We have a web server here, all right? Now, we came to this part, like, right here, and obviously we didn't know the login, okay? Mm -hmm. So, we figured out that it had what's called a mount on it. Now, a mount, you can reach out and tell it, hey, I want you to mount to me. And it's like, okay, cool, here you go. And it gives you the information, all right? Oh. Yeah, because it's stupid, all right? <laughs> so, this is our mount. Oh, whoopsie daisy. This is our mount, like right here, okay? So, we have this thing called Umbraco, okay? That's a, like, I don't even know what you can call it, like mm -hmm. a CMS type of thing, but we can look in there. So, I decided, I was like, okay, where can I find the password for this guy, right? The password is in app data. So if we see the in the app data, I looked it up on Google. I said, where's Umbraco store attached to that? It was like app data. Like, Thank you, Google. All right. And if we look in here, we see this Umbraco.spf. So what we can do is we can cat or strings. Okay. We watch. Ready? If we cat this, that means I want to read it. Okay. <laughs> and if we do this, okay. Ready? Can you read that? No. Yeah, me neither. I see media 1031 food log dot text. Someone's talking about food. You know, yeah, and that's not really very readable, right? We do have a key here, though. I wonder if we can actually get the hash out of here. Oh, we have a yeah, key there. there is a key. Yeah, but I don't know what that key means. I have no idea what that's for. We know there's an admin. Okay. Admin. And that, but that's not very readable, right? But we can look at something called strings. We can go strings. Umbraco. Umbraco. That's the F, okay? Sounds like But, Umbraco. you ready? This is a lot of stuff. Whoa. Do you want to read all this crap? No. Me neither. So what we're going to do is we're banjo. just going to... Yeah. Bingo. And banjo. Yeah. Like, I don't care about that, right? I want to try to find a password. <laughs> yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called grep. Grep means only find stuff that has this word in it. All right? Okay. So we're going to grep for admin, right? We know that admin exists. So let's yeah. grep for admin. That's a little bit easier to read, right? Mm -hmm. Ready? Easier. It's only this much, okay? So this guy right here, admin at htb.local... That's obviously a username, okay? Then, this, like, right here would be what's called a hash, okay? So what a hash is, is a password that they just did some crap to and did an algorithm, used some math, and they're like, do this, okay? They're, like, secure. They're not secure, okay? You're about to see that, okay? Admin, 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 admin. Yeah, there's a lot of admins there. So we're going to grab this hash, okay? Now what we're going to do, all right, is we are going to... Desktop, hack the box, and this is called remote, right? This box is called remote. So I'm gonna remove tech rf hash dot text. That's what we just did. Okay, I gotta locate this thing called John dot pot. John Yeah, we're just gonna delete him. That's all we're gonna do. John got in the pot. Yep, John. John is messing around. <laughs> in the pot. Yep, he's gonna be cooked. He's gonna become <laughs> spaghetti soon. Yeah. All right, let's grab that hash again. Okay. What we're gonna do? We're gonna say echo that hash into hash dot text. Now, if we read here, what does that say? Uh, that says... Uh, SHA-1. Okay? SHA-1. That's a type of hash. All right? It's a type of hashing algorithm. So what we can do is we can tell John the Ripper. We can say, hey, John, I want you to look at hash.txt. That's what we just put into, right? This hash. Right? Yeah. I want you to use what's called a word list. So what it's going to do is it's going to look at a list of words. She said, yeah. <laughs> all right? <laughs> it's going to look at a list of words. Right? And it's going to use those words against a SHA-1 hash. 
So we're going to say user share word list rocky.txt. Tag tag fork equals four <laughs> means that we are going to use four CPU threads or cores. I don't even remember which one. And that's not a lot of CPU. I guess. I mean, and this guy right here is what eight, um, twelve threads, and that's a that's a small one. So what's the CPU again? Uh, four. No, what's the CPU I, in a computer? Michael. What does it do? Do you remember? This has four different. No, what does the CPU do in a computer? Mm, what's it, it used for? It saves this thing. No. What is what is what is uh GPU for? The graphics. Do you remember? No, your eyes? They're like your eyes, remember? They, they're for graphics or whatever? They're, they're like your eyes, can you see? Remember RAM? It's like stuff that you don't think about? No. Alright? Do you remember like, what the motherboard? What's the that on your body? Is like where you hook up all the plugs yeah, but what is it on your body? Do you remember? It's the whole thing, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so do you remember what the CPU is? Thing that is the, brain. the brain. Good job. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh no, she knows. She knows Dusty Way. She's helped me build what three or four computers. You helped me build. Yeah, and a couple of robot cars. Yep, and a couple of robot cars. All right. So we're gonna say the formats could be raw SHA one. Okay, that's what John looks at it as. Okay. Now you ready? <laughs> you ready? We don't know what the password is, right? We're gonna hit enter. Bacon and cheese is the password. Bacon all right, for admin. <laughs> so now, what does that mean? We can go admin at hdb.local, right? And we can log in with bacon and cheese. This is why you don't, oh, well, if I type it incorrectly, bacon and cheese. This is why you don't make dumb passwords, right there. Because now we're in, right? Okay. All right, so. Bacon and cheese, that's his password. We have bacon tonight. Yeah. All right. So from here, okay, now I need to figure out, now we already figured out what the version was, okay? So I went over here, I would CD back, back, that means go back one directory, because we are in the app data directory, right? It's like clicking out a folder, okay? That's what these directories are. That's all we're doing. Now we're going to look at web config. So we want a cat web config. That means look at it. And we're going to grep, so we just only want to see anything that says this in it. All right, okay. that tech I means it could be uppercase, lowercase, any case, don't care case. You know, you know why it's called uppercase and lowercase? Because it's, I don't know. Okay, so a long time ago, right, whenever I think it was typewriters when it came out, they had all the lowercase buttons on the lower platform. So it was the lower case. So there were two keyboards. The uppercase buttons were on the upper platform. So that's why it's called uppercase. So that's why. So back then they had two, two. Well, it was just it was like a stack. So it was like one this. keyboard, but it was a stack. It was like this keyboard stacked on top of another one. Yeah. That's why it's called uppercase and lowercase. Do you know why bugs are called bugs in a program? Because there was used to be a giant computer, and then the actual bugs kept falling into there. Yep, and they would have to clean out the bugs every day, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right, good job. Okay, so we find this right now. We got to figure out what the version is. Okay, so the version is seven point twelve point four. Yes. All right, now Kelly Linux has this really cool thing called Searchploit, okay? So Searchploit, what that does is it says, hey, let's look around and see is this version, 7.12.4, vulnerable to anything? So we can do 7.12.4 and hit enter. And sure enough, we're working on this like right now, right? I'm Brocco. Yeah, I'm it's a content management system. That's This is a content management system, okay? And we have version 7.12.4. So we have authenticated, that means that you logged in already, you know what username and password, remote code authentication or execution. That's bad, right? So let's go ahead and do a sublime text for that little guy like right there. So we gotta put our login, admin, at http.local, password, bacon and cheese, and then the host, which is the IP address, okay? Okay. Now it's gonna get hard. So 10.10.108. 10.10.10.180 10, 10, is the IP address. Okay? okay. That's called an IPv4 address. IP version 4. Okay. All right. IP version 4. Yep. So, what I did here was I said, hey, you're going to go ahead and you're going to open up what's called PowerShell. Okay. Uh, yes. This is PowerShell. Okay. Nothing special, right? What's and I want you to run this command like right here. What? Now, that command, what's up? What's your question? What's the dot exe? Dot exe means executable. Oh. Okay. So, 
Now we're gonna run this command like right here, right? This IEX, IWR, use basic parsing. This means, so IEX and IWR, that means, hey, I want you to reach out to the internet, grab this file, bring it back, and put it into memory. Don't run it to the disk, okay? I want you to put it into memory. So what is that bypass or health bypass antivirus? Yay! Yay. Now you know how to bypass antivirus. <laughs> well, that's one way to help with it, okay? Yeah. Use basic parsing, okay? So. There's a thing back in the day, it was called Internet Explorer. All right, let's go way back. It's 1999 with AOL as the messenger. No, I'm just kidding. All right, there's a thing called Internet Explorer, right? If it has never been started on a machine, it can't go out and download something. If you tell it, use basic parsing, you tell it, I don't care if you've ever been started, you're going to go do this. And the goes, okay, boss. All right? <laughs> okay, yeah, you're still sleeping, remember? It's like All right. dogs. Yep, the whole game, boss. Here we go. Okay, <laughs> so from there... We're going to go to this web address. You know what that web address is? Uh, the Ready? Code. No, watch. 1010.14.19. 1010.14.19. We're going to call back to us. And we're going to tell it to download this file and go ahead and run it. All right? <laughs> so what we have to do first is we have to do a sublime text for invoke PowerShell ccp.ps1, which is a PowerShell script, right? PS1, okay? Scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're going to say, hey, I want you to run this command. All right. So we're going to listen on port 53. So we have a thing called netcat. Yep, netcat. And we can tell it, listen on port 53. And just wait. Okay. So it's a lot like you, how you don't listen. But this actually listens. Boom. Shots. Okay. So. <laughs> This is just going to sit here and it's going to wait for someone to come back and connect to us. But now we need to start up a web server. Okay. Let's say Python 3 web server on port 80. So ready. If I go to my IP address now, I'll have a web server. I'll have a website. Okay. It's going to be super cool too. Ready? Look how cool my website is. Want to see it? Isn't that awesome? Yeah. What, well, yeah. Isn't that like super cool? What if, if you got here, what do you be like? Oh my God, this is the coolest site in the world. Like this is better than Google. No, I know. But now we have to have that go out and actually run something. Let's go ahead and try it. Okay. Oh, wait, there's you instead. No, I don't care. It's okay. Okay, so we're going to do a CD bat back. And this is 46153.py. So we'll do a Python 3. 46. You know what your cars went on? What programming language? Python. Oh. That was called. Oh. Sublime? No. Did it not? Oh. I did actually download two of them last time I did this box. So it might, this might be the reason why. This one might not. Because it said password. And a bunch of URLs. Yeah. Well, that's ours. Well, that's theirs, I mean. Um, those aren't URLs, though. Yeah. Let me see here. Host. Plus the box. Boom, boom. Host. Okay. Plus that. Okay. Username. Login. That should be good. Why say it's XXX? Let's save it. Did I not save it? I might not save it. I don't think I saved it. Oops, see Daisy. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so this one had a problem, but that's okay. Oh, but it does look like it did try to download it. It's saying that that file does not exist. See how it's saying file not found? 200, code 400. Okay, so it's saying, saying that it doesn't exist? Let's see here. Invoke, oh, is that why? Nope, there's definitely attack there. Invoke attack PowerShell tcp.ps1. It is spelled correctly. Like I said, I did download two of them the other day, so this one may just not work. So we may have to download the other one. Okay. Let's try to run it one more time. We'll see if we get another 200 over here. Okay, so we're not getting another 200, so no, okay. Let's go ahead and, oh, that's from me going into it. Let's go ahead and download the other one. So we'll do a search point. So let's see what this one's called. This one's called 46153, search ploy. Um, what was the version? Uh, 12 something, 7 something. Oh my god, Marcy. 7, 12. No, what? no, that's that key address that we use. <laughs> okay. So we want this like right here. We're going to say search ploy attack M. That guy's right there, okay. And then we're going to go ahead and do a sublime text on 49, 488. All right, let's go ahead and throw in our arguments here. So it's telling us it wants our arguments like that. Um, I don't really want to put in my arguments like that, though. That's not really how I want to do it. 
I really want to use the other one, but why is that working anymore? You getting bored? No. Are you lying? No. I am. Or you are. Oh yeah, I'm always bored. Power shell that exe. I'm just tired. File name. We'll go lay down. I don't want to go watch your shows. Go watch your shows and lay down. I want to lay down and go to bed. Well, then sit up and watch your shows because you gotta be. Yeah, go sit up and watch shows because you're in about 40 minutes here. I'm gonna be coming in or 20 minutes here. I'm gonna be coming in anyways. All right. Okay. Give me a hug. Yeah. Give me a kiss. All right, I love you. Bye bye. You did good work. Good job, folksy. Okay, so why is this not working like right here? Let's actually go ahead and read the problems that's having. What's it saying here? Fail to parse 10, 10, 10, 180 on Brocco. And that was like where it's at, right? It's 10, 10, 180 on Brocco. Yeah. So that is like where it's at. So I'm wondering why I failed to parse that. Hmm. Okay. That is okay. She failed to parse that, huh? What if I messed it up? Proxstar info arguments command. Okay. Proxstar info file name. This. I'm wondering if these have to be different. I'm thinking, what I'm thinking here is that I messed up the, um, the script here. So what I'm thinking is that string command should actually be this, like right here. Procstar info file name should be the other thing, right? So let's go ahead and cut that. We'll put that up here. That makes more sense to me, actually. And we'll say PowerShell.exe. Say, hey, Procstar PowerShell.exe. Go ahead and try that, like right there. Still getting the same exact problems. Okay, file usually live Python 3 URL at pi parse turn six. Okay. So we're still getting the same exact issues, but what's funny is I didn't have these issues I don't think the other day. Um maybe maybe the host maybe that's about still getting the same problems. Huh. Okay. So we got the host in there. We have what we want to use in there, but we're not getting, and it's not obviously coming down here at all either. Line three. Oh yeah, that's obviously the problem right there. Alright. Now you're printing out storage. It's not really giving me anything here now, is it? That shouldn't be a problem at all, like right there, but fill the parse. Ten to ten one eighty of Rocco. 107180 on Brocco. It is HTTP. Boom, boom. Now I'm a little bit confused. Unless the IP address changed. Which I don't think it did. Let's go and refresh this. The site's still up. I mean, it looks like, yeah, it's still up and everything like that. Okay, so what is going on now? Yeah, password equals bacon and cheese. We got that. It's failing to parse the site. I 
Let's see if this actually exists like right here. <clears throat> Not copy the way that thought was going to. Okay. Saying that I can't find the site, but put all the information as far as I know that we need to put in there in there. Which is very, 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 very strange. That looks good. Oh. Maybe I should actually do that right. What do you mean? That's that's fine. It should be fine. Here we go. Is that going to be the problem? Is that actually the problem right there? No. Still failing to parse site. I don't understand why it's failing to parse that site. What's up? How you doing? That took me like a minute to read. I was like, that was a sheer wreck. <laughs> um, let's just get rid of... Let's put in this. Try that. All right. Let's try that first. Okay, still not getting anything in here. Still failing to parse the site for some reason. No, it's that. It's nothing with that. It's that if that was the case, it just wouldn't make a callback. It just wouldn't do anything. We at least find the site. It can't find the actual 10, 10, 10, 180 site. It's saying that that doesn't exist. That site, like right there. Which it 100% obviously does exist because we're on it. Okay. 384. Well, you know, that would be a hard one to get because line 384. What are you talking about? Is this thing even. Do we even have the right file in here? I feel like we're not even using the right file. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Login. Admin. At HGB.local. Password. We're going to say is bacon and cheese. Host. 10, 10, 10, 180. I'm not gonna mess with anything up here yet. We're gonna try to open up calculator. See if we can. See if Callie dies. See what we can and cannot do. There we go. Same exact thing. There's no line three, okay. Yeah, sure, I bet. Line 397. Line 384. Oh, fucking thing. <laughs> that's just pissing me off. Is that's not, it's not a damn thing. So are we just going to spend all night fixing someone else's exploit? Or are we just going to go find another one? Let's 
was it, 7.12.4? Yeah, just find another one. Yeah, we're not going to spend all night fixing someone else's. This is probably going to be the same exact one. Oh, wow. This one's... This one's doing uh, something here, huh? Well, I'll use this guy. This one looks like the one that we actually saw before. Let's go ahead and grab this guy like, right here. Let's see if we can use him. Let's try to do like a callback on this guy like, right here. Let's see if we can actually use him or not. Okay. And that says command. So we could always try to do a command, huh? Well, we could always try Python 2, but it definitely said that was Python 3, didn't it? Did it say that was Python 3? I thought it did. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Well, uh, maybe not. Yeah, okay. It's Python 2. Okay, I thought... You know, I really thought it was Python 3. That's my fault. I really did think it was Python 3. I thought the top of this at point out three. So that was my fault. Thank you very much. Good freaking thinking. Good freaking thinking. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's do our string command of PowerShell or um, IX, IWRHP, 10, 10. I don't remember my P address and I messed up that with 10. So we go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do an IF config. 14, 19. 14, 19 slash invoke. PowerShell tcp.ps1. All right, there's that. And we want to file info of PowerShell. Okay, let's try that like right there. Let's see if that works. Okay, you got it. Didn't make callback though. But he did at least get it that time. Didn't make callback though. Let's try one more time. You got it. It's not making a callback. Why aren't you making the callback? Did I put the wrong IP address at the bottom or something like that? 10, 10, 14, 19. That's me, right? 10, 10, 14, 19. Let's pick a different port, like 4444 or something like that. Usually I always pick 53, but. He's getting it. It's not running. I think uh, let's try to do a taxi in here. Tell that command or something like that, right? So let's try to do a string command of taxi for execute, right? And he's definitely getting it, but it's not calling back to me. Why? Oh, you know what I did not do, though? I know why. I know exactly why. Use basic parsing. Probably telling me, like, right now, Internet Explorer engine has not been started. Let's go! Okay, now that that happened, now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that taxi. And we're going to use port 53 because I am, I, I don't, that's how I roll. Because I'm just a crappy human being. And I always have to be right. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> I'm a crappy person, so I always have to be right. All right, let's see here. Whoops. Let's go. All right. <laughs> I'm a crappy human being. I have to be right. So I have to test my way. <laughs> All right. So we're in internet serve. I not serve. Um, I think we're probably gonna be www dat or um, not www. You know, I not public whatever. Yeah, I ISS. I think we're gonna be them. And if we are ISS, that means that we have um, what is it? We have a uh, SE impersonate privilege. Guarantee it. I guarantee it. Impersonate a client after authentication. 
enabled. So that means we can go ahead and we can do a CD and C Windows temp. Uh, wget. Was it 1419, right? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. Yep, 1419 slash print spoofer. Let's go. Uh, I probably should have made an out file for that. And actually have a thing running. Got it. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and grab SC64. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and look at my notes like real quick and get a callback with that. So we have Prince Boof like right here. We can go ahead and run this guy right here. Right. And we're just gonna do some quick changes over here. And we're gonna make this 10, 10, 14, 19. 14, 19, put a period in there. And that's actually just going to run like this. And we can say 64, whoopsie daisy. And this is gonna be a 64 like right here. Probably should have done that in the, uh, probably should not have done that in the mount over there. Made my life a little bit easier, but you know, whatever. And let's go ahead and start up a listener. I'm um, 41337. Let's go ahead and send this off. And it's not going to work because I'm an idiot. Here's slash that. And we get this back. Who am I? And we should be NT authority system. Um, the, the, use basic parsing. Uh, tax C, that was to tell it it's a command. That's what tax C was for. And I was like, why is this working? Maybe I tell it's a command. That's what tax C is. So if you're in command prompt and you were typing like PowerShell tax C, it's saying, hey, run this command. Um, so just so you know. So we can do like a, like right here, we can say PowerShell tax C, who am I? Right? It'll run that command in PowerShell. That's all that's doing. I think we can also just do a PowerShell, who am I? Can we? Yeah, we can. All right. But um, yeah, tax C tells it it's a command. So I'll see, like, does it have to know what's command? Like, what version of PowerShell are you using? Stuff like that. So let's go ahead and cd into c users administrator. cd into desktop. And we can look at that root.txt. cd into c users. I got cd into public. And there's our user.txt. So let's freaking go. All right. I thought that was really a speed run. I just did it. I did it once before. I couldn't really remember the exact way. As you can see, I had to Google a couple things, but yeah, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. I think it might have taken me, I don't know, maybe like an hour the first time I did it or so. So, not too bad at all. I actually said that's the impersonate privilege. Maybe I should read the things beforehand, huh? I should probably read them, and then I'll know a lot more of what's actually happening on these machines, huh? If I actually just read it for three seconds. But no. I'd rather just go in blind. Just, huh, what are we going to do today? I don't know. You know, you do this in Metasploit. Are you serious? I could just open up Metasploit and did it. Why am I playing all these games then? Does it really have? Because it didn't say anything. It did not say anything about a Ruby file in there in Search Boy. You know, it's not like. No, it can't. It's not Metasploit. I don't believe you. Let's check it out. Let's see if it's in there. I don't believe you. <laughs> oh, the last part? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could have done the last part, yeah. I see a person a privilege, yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. So that was that one, like, right there. So that was remote. Um, 